Hello, everybody, once again to uh, another edition of the Midnight Podcast that we have here on MidnightTCG.com. Um, got myself, All City King. We've got The Fox, of course. We've got Nomad, and we've got Eddie Phoenix. Uh, and recording, we've got Jin. Um, and today we are talking about... <clears throat> sorry, we are talking about uh, machines. Um, so lately we've been on a... What are these? Archetypes. Archetype kicks. So um, it's good that I finally am able to jump in with you guys and join on this one. So let's just get it started, Fox. You've got the list right in front of you, so let's uh, do this. Well, we're going to start off with our favorite machines. I'm going to have to say uh, top three picks. Number one, of course, is Genzo. Just the spell lockdown. I like to tech him into my current deck right now. The guy's playing a guy last night on Dueling Network, and he's like, what the heck did you side into? And it's a little bit of a chaos deck, but it's a, also a Genzo lockdown to get rid of the annoying solemn warnings, solemn judgments, two mirror force, you, you get the spill. Uh, number two for the Fox. Uh, was Reflect Bounder. I loved it when that came off, off and went to three. I, like, played a deck going nuts with it. Just the ability to bounce back the damage to my opponent. I love Reflect Bounder. Definitely one of my favorite machines to play. It's not for every deck, but if you want to troll your opponent, it's a good card to do it. And finally, if I was to go with my top three, without going with uh, Cyber Dragon, because I really don't want to go there. Everybody's going to like Cyber Dragon. <laughs> oh, I would say that my last one would be Cyber Valley. I like the effect of being able to have three different options there. It's Again, it's not a card that's there for every deck, but it has multiple uses. You can either use it to stall out, stop a battle phase, draw a card, or you can, like I did with my stall Exodia deck, bring out a battle fader next turn, bring out uh, Cyber Valley, Fader's already going to leave the field. I just remove them myself, and I get to draw two cards. Or, of course, oh. his ability to put a card back on top of your deck. So that would be the Fox's top three favorite machines. What about you, Eddie? I thought it went to Nomad next. No, you passed it on to Nomad. Well, son of a... Ah, well, hey. What? Okay, oh. so Eddie's second? I thought okay. that was second. Yeah, yeah Nomad's second. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We're all you can go. Back. It's all right. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna cut into your time here. No, go ahead, Nomad. You're second, man. Okay. Second. Um. Do it. Okay. Well, <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to say Jinzo. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna this have to say Jinzo. Nice things. Yeah. <laughs> I get broken. Our cheese. It. Our cheese broken. Our cheese broken, but uh. Jinzo is no longer in that category. Um, I still like it. Uh, it's obviously one of my favorite machines for, I guess, all the reasons that Fox has mentioned, but I still think it's playable. Um, I run it in the Frog Monarchs. I have one of them in there. And again, Frogs is the only deck that I've played in the last couple of months just because I haven't had time to really make anything else. But um, I like my Jinzo. I like my Trap Negation. Um, and prevention too is kind of cool um along with that uh, i have to mention the uh, ancient gear uh gadgetron dragon it's a uh, 3000 attack um it's immune to mirror force and dimensional prison um it does have a few nifty effects if you summon it through the gadgets but um we'll get into i guess other reasons and ways that i like it later on um and then, of course, I'm going to go with Barrel Dragon. Um, I know it's not exactly one of the most uh, played card anymore, but it's 
It's one of the first I had. Um, I've always liked the artwork and the, the mechanics of the coin toss. Um, I, always, I thought it was cool in the anime, too, with Bandit Keith. I thought he was just hilarious. Um, and also, too, someone I've always looked up to in the game is uh, John Danker, and he always had Barrel Dragon as his avatar. So in that respect, just another reason to me for, uh, for liking that guy. Um, so yeah, I think Eddie's going to have his turn now. Yep, okay. Got to go with, as a top three, I won't go in any order. Um, Jinzo, because st- being able to stop traps, <laughs> that's an amazing thing. Uh, Reflect Bounder, that card is so fun in Burn Decks. And it's really tough because I've got about two to three different cards for that third slot. But I'll go ahead and throw in another card that goes in. Since you throw in Barrel Dragon, I will throw in Blowback Dragon. Yes, the yeah. Blowback. That is a fun dragon with wee little coin flippies. The one I shall now is... pass it on to all city. Um, well, I am I really have four monsters, but three of them go together. I like Cyber Dark, Keel, Edge, and Horn. I just liked the fact that you could make a deck based on them and you could make Cyber Dark Dragon and just, like, take any any dragon. It was just, it was one of my favorite decks to play against, and I eventually built it and played it, um, and that was, I loved it so, so much. Um, and another one that I liked, I just liked Cyber Phoenix. I just, I just, um, I liked it's art. It looks cool. Um, and it's just, it was useful. I ran it in the cyber dark, uh, deck. So yeah, that's really it. I have a lot of inexperience otherwise with machines. Um, just simply because, uh, Oh, except, except I play Machina gadgets. So I have lots of experience with them. I just forgot about them. Um, but I like those and the gadgets. They're awesome. I think gadgets is where machines really got broken. And even though they've kind of died out, uh, here recently we've seen a resurgence of gadget decks. So, yeah, Ga- other than Cyber Dragon, gadgets were other than your players who knew that Genzo was great back in the day. Gadgets really took machines to another level. I think that's when everyone started paying attention to them is when the gadgets first came out, and everyone was like, wow, Ultimate Offering is at three. This deck can be stupid. It can be ridiculous, and it just, I know. like, And now there's the, there's the Gear Gears that have come out with well, a brand you, new blue gadget. So, with the blue player, gadget now? Yeah, it's called Gear Guy Gadget X. Oh, blue. It's, okay. It's a blue I thought there was like an actual, like, I thought there was no, an actual not, blue gadget. We're not talking Ojamas today. We're talking machines. Uh-oh. With playable uh, god cards, one of the state, one of the main decks you see play of either Obelisk or Raw or even Slifer is gadget decks, just because of the hand presence they create. So, yeah, I mean, machines definitely still have an impact in the game. They they've been around since the beginning. We've kind of went over the first three. Spellcasters, dragons, warriors, and machines pretty much made up the beginning of Yu-Gi-Oh. If you look back at Legend of Blue Eyes, those four types are what started Yu-Gi-Oh in itself as far as the best support in the game. Well, that's true. Um, also, yeah. i got a fun fact here. Um, in uh, 09... I played against the only two gadget decks at Nationals in Canada. So wanting to go to YCS Indy, it's like 60 miles for me. I just have to raise the funds. So go to the auction house. There's a nice mint LOB Exodia set that regularly goes on eBay for $95 for $70. Club of Fox. Fun the Fox's trip to YCS Indy. <laughs> yes, and if you go 
he will give you a shout out on the next podcast or the <laughs> one afterwards, I guess, would be. So, with favorites out of the way, we move on to Staples. Um, Staples, of course, uh, if you're a Malefic Skill Drain player, definitely a staple would be Gajilton Dragon. Just because you blow up your field spell and there he is, a 3,000 beater. Then uh, Gadgets, of course. They're starting to make a resurgence. Just the ability to refill your hand continually. The only thing that really shuts it down is Veller, and use of that has really went down. Uh, and Cyber Dragon, of course, definitely. Uh, for a special summon engine, Cyber Dragon's good. Malefic Skill Drain depends on Malefic Cyber End. So, Cyber Dragon, I'm going to say a coming staple. Many people have overlooked it for a few formats, but I really think that as people start getting back into the game and start doing an, a little actual research into the game, Jinzo is one of your most overpowered machines that could really make an impact in a game. With Torrential at 2, MST at 2, with Gravity Bind at 3, every, everything that is so hurtful in a deck, most of it consists of the trap zone. And that's what a lot of our newer players aren't focusing on. Oh man, I just got warning. Well, you know what? If you'd have tossed a Jinzo into the graveyard and called a haunted him, Guess what? He stays on the field. You got a 2400 monster. And with Call at 3, I I'm amazed people haven't abused the fact that they can abuse Jinzo. I mean, he was once so feared that he was limited to one. Of course, the game is moving along faster and everybody wants to run synchros and exceeds. But if you're just looking at a toolbox overall, and something that's going to catch your opponent off guard, Jinzo's definitely the way to go. You know, I do like your point, though, that you mentioned even in modern day of the, import the importance of traps. And I think it's because even if you do have an emphasis on the monster spam and all that, it has to start somewhere. And if you can stop it early or if you can have those few, few key plays, many of which are trap-related, I think that... It's something a lot of us overlook nowadays, and again, it's why I still I like Jinzo. Um, I'm not going to run it in every deck, but it's like you mentioned too, with a lot of cards like Call the Haunted and ways you can summon it and get around it. And okay, you know, you can argue that when you have it, well, you're also defenseless. But I mean, if you've got a plan, that shouldn't be a problem, right? That's right. I mean, the overall playability of it is just... Jinzo, I think, <clears throat> as we get some of the newer players to start looking back at the classics, and they start realizing, oh, man, I could shut down most of what's stopping me from spamming the field if I play this one card, because their traps are useless. Why waste the space in your spell and trap zone with a royal decree when you can get it out of 2400 monster, who does the same thing? Well, you know what also, if we like him so much, there's also that Psychic Shockwave card. We yep. could look into that. Uh, With that, I'm going to pass on Staples to Nomad. Um, I have to start with Limit Removal, um, just for, I guess, obvious reasons. Um, I think I've joked about this before, but like, if you play limiter in a time that you're not about to lose, you're probably winning. Like, it doubles the attack of all your machines on the field. It's a quick play. You can play it as late as before damage calculation. Um, and even if you're not going for the win, you can still you can still make a play of doubling a cyber dragon or a Jinzo, you know, in some cases. And it's one of those cards that to me, is really a symbol of machines. 
um, like if you think of a machine, even in a broad context, it's as strong as it can be. It doesn't have those living limitations, and you break those wide open uh, with limiter, and it's a one for a reason. See, you have limiter removal, and it's limited. Um, again, we have our Cyber Dragon. Um, it's a staple in a sense that you can put it anywhere, I guess. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the term calling it a staple, but I mean, it's pretty much as close as we're going to get. Um, there might be something in the extra deck that I'm forgetting about, but I guess we have limit removal, we have Cyber Dragon, and to some, uh, and to some extent, I guess we'll have Jinzo just because of its uh, splash ability. Um, other than those, though, I think machines are very, uh, very focused. So I'm just going to be boring for my answer. <laughs> I hope Eddie has something else here. Yeah, I hope Eddie has something else for us. Okay, well, if you're going to go with staples in almost any machine deck... Depending on the actual build you're going to go with, if you're wanting to go a more, like, if you want to go with Cyber Dragon and various machines, one of the biggest things I can say you can throw into your deck is Power Bond. Being able to double your attack monsters, being able to double the attack of your monsters, and Fusion Summon, like, you know, say, Cyber and Dragon, or, uh... Maybe going for, um, the one where you can take one, one Cyber Dragon and all your machines in your graveyard. I think it's your Chimera Tech, isn't it? Or thank you, Chimera Tech Over Dragon. Yeah. Him being one, or I know there's another one. We also have that one that's like um, not over dragon. It's Chimera Tech though, because uh, I thought it wouldn't it double the printed thing, and it's printed at a question mark or a zero. I just tell well, dou- I can't remember. Yeah, um, if it would double original attack, um, original attack is normally zero if you have a question mark. Uh, so that does make sense. I honestly don't remember enough about it, but. Going to look at it up right now, actually. I don't think it does. I think because it is a question mark, it doesn't. That's why. That's why it's best used with like a Cyber Twin or Cyber End. I mean, even with Cyber Twin, that's a 5600 attacker. Bam. Cyber End, 8000 attack. Yeah, and piercing. Yeah. And, I mean, with Cyber Twin, that's 5,600 piercing that can attack twice. And if you really want to, if you just want to be like that be that guy who's a douche, just throw on a uh, limit removal on top of that and, you know... Bingo! Flip. Cyber Twin doesn't have piercing, though, the sad part. Nobody can attack twice, yeah, so... Yeah, but, uh, ben said that it had uh, piercing. No, that's Cyber In, but Cyber Twin gets the attack twice. But still, if you hit him at 5,600 and then you limit or removal, to removal him, you're yeah. going to finish your opponent off. I mean, that's 11,200. And that's assuming it's your only or machine, too, and you may... Magic cylinder ever. Yeah, or, ah. just, or just say, screw you, I'm going to drop a, uh effect veiler on it. You mad, bro? Yeah, but even though... But even then, though, I mean, if you got magic cylinder at three... It it could it happen. It works. It works so well with Magic Cylinder at three. I love Magic Cylinder at three because now I can just go. I'm gonna be annoying. Yeah, you know, You're gonna Magic attack- Cylinder at three though. It's still a surprise whenever it happens because no one runs it anymore. Exactly. And it's gonna happen earlier too. It's gonna happen earlier, and it may happen more than once. And guess what? And you'll actually get it off in game one too. All city had to drop on us. He had to go meet someone. So you get to fill his spot. No. Yeah. And, and his nope. Skype kind of cut out on him, so that kind of sucks. You know, I think 
I think it was all an act. I think he's going to meet his dealer, his cardboard crack dealer. That's, right. that's why he's that's why he's cutting out on us. He's going to meet Kevin Taywart. <laughs> he's going to meet Kevin Taywart. Uh, he's going to get his fix. But other than the the power bond, of course, limited removal. Cyber Dragon is of course a staple in almost any deck <laughs> because it's you know it's chaos and such like that. Um, running the uh, it's it's a it's another one of the fusions. I think it's Chimera. I know it's not Chimera Tech Over Dragon. Fortress Dragon. Fortress. Yeah. Fortress. Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon. The one Fortress we- Dragon is an oh. interesting. It doesn't use a uh, polymerization or anything though. It's a uh, weird contact. Yes, that yeah. is. The, that's the other one I was going to ready to mention. Thank you, there, Jinzaki. One part of that is running. DNA on your opponent and still in their whole field and oh, yeah. them up. Uh, I hadn't even thought of that. It's a good wow, combo. I never thought of that either. Yeah. yeah. Then still everything on their side of the field to go into a Chimera Tech Fortress. And the thing is, too, if you, like if you could make a deck where you're actually running that a lot, like in uh, like in Heretics or something, then you could just run Cyber Dragon, and you wouldn't have to expel a whole lot of space on that play. Oh, no, you wouldn't. It would just be like, I'm just going to yeah. use your crap. It's kind of like a super polymerization for uh, for the Cyber Dragon or just yeah. machine deck. And thank you, I have just found another engine I can use for... Well, I'll wait. That is the whole oh. point of these podcasts is so many players, we've got new ones and our older ones, a lot of them have resorted to wanting to build everyone else's build just to win. The originality is going out of the game. It's to get people thinking, you know, what is really out there that you never think of until you, you know, actually single it out. Mooka Mooka See, deck. <laughs> yes, Mooka Mooka deck is coming. See, that's the thing I'd like to do. Is I like to sit down with my friends and talk about. Like, I've got a deck right now that I'm trying to build. Uh, it's one of those things where I know that Coin has the deck on. Coin has the name of the deck on the site. I don't know if I put mine up before his or yeah. the Gears of War deck, but I'm not using the Gear Gaia, the uh, the Gear Gaia thing <laughs> or the Gears or whatever. Gears I'm using the old school deck. ancient Gears. Oh, get Billy and Crowler. Yes, and it, it, the thing is that. <laughs> I love using Gear Town. Gear Town works so well in that deck. Especially Remember, if I run magical hats and, you know, boom. Remember the Slifer Slackers, because after the Flash tournament that's coming Tuesday, all the Slifer Slackers will have their eyes open by us obelisks. Ooh. <laughs> I like that. Next podcast. Uh, Kyo or um, uh, Bastion here. <laughs> <laughs> Feels yellow good. Jacket. A yellow jacket. Make him like a wasp. Okay. Anyway, let's get back on topic. We should make him dress up as a wasp, on the, and then post pictures. <laughs> We've got a picture. He's on the front page. <laughs> like he, dress him up as like an insect or hornet. <laughs> and then, yeah. Banned from uh, all of uh, Konami events from here on out for hazing uh, new moderators. Yeah. Guys, back on topic. Back okay, on topic. we'll pass it on to Jen. What's, what's, what's your uh, staples? Staple machine. For, um, Cyber Phoenix is nice um, because of its little uh, protections ability. Uh, Cyber Dragon was already mentioned. Because uh, yeah, the fortress dragon, it, cyber dragon is almost a uh, staple in every side deck, um, so it kind of has to be mentioned. Um, I'm just kidding to everyone. Uh, Jinzo <laughs> obviously has that splash ability, easy to bring back with Call of the Haunted. I'm waiting for everyone to see if everybody forgets one staple that has reemerged. Reemerged. Yes. 
You mean that? You mean those uh, second and third copies of limiter removal that you hide like up your sleeve and like <laughs> under your playmat? You mean those reemergence? Like our uh, milling monster that's a machine. Come on, guys. Oh, I should know this. Trivia. The milling monster that's a machine. Used in light swarms. Used in teledad. Oh, you mean card trooper. Card oh. trooper. Milling How do we forget card trooper? <laughs> Extra attack. And when he gets destroyed, you get a draw. And it doesn't even care how it's destroyed, and it can't miss timing. So even if you, like, I don't know. So, Fox, if you want to get real technical about it, there's also another one that was played back in the day that was a machine. Machine Tuner, Dark Monster. Oh, you mean uh, Black Salvo? Yes. Jinx. Yep. Black Salvo. Uh, exactly, can't speak now. But sorry, um, Card Trooper. Oh, oh. Card Trooper so beats, out, is this. beats out Black Salvo. Cough, cough. <laughs> Black Salvo theme tournament. With Dekoiti's galore. <laughs> Remember? Uh, you know the train guy? Yeah. Dekoichi or Dekoichi? I don't know how to say it. It doesn't really matter. I don't give a shit. It's so, an evil train. With the staples, we'll move on to Broken, uh... I'd venture to say broken. Uh, definitely, when people start rediscovering it, yet again, I think he's going to get mentioned through the whole podcast. Genzo, Genzo with Call of the Haunted at three, with all of the trap hate, is so broken, and people overlook him right now. Genzo is definitely a broken card. The only reason Konami hasn't bumped him down is because nobody's paid attention to him. Mm-mm. People started going nuts playing him again, realizing how how powerful that monster really is. Jinzo really is a broken card. Uh, definitely the abilities of Card Trooper. The ability to mill for extra. If you're running it in the right deck, it, it can be broken. It can put what you need in the graveyard. Say you're running Black Wings, so you need to mill something for a Bayou Turbo Engine, and he mills just what you need. Light Swarms, you mill off a Wolf, you get to bring that out. Just the different mechanics that Card Trooper can be- bring to the game can make him broken. Um, it's also a really good first turn play if you have to in Light Swarm. Mm hmm. Um, it's. A very versatile card overall, and I like how you can control the amount of cards that you mill, even though it's usually three. I just kind of like that. Is it's know. definitely <laughs> overlooked again, but in the right deck, Chimera Tech Over Dragon is, or not Over Dragon, but Fortress Dragon can be a broken card if you run it right. It can be very, very instrumental. You can basically, without running heroes, you can super poly your opponent's field with the, with a DNA. Change all their cards to machines and use their entire field to fuel one big monster for you. And the best part about that is, is no one, I mean no one, will see that coming. Exactly. This and it's funny, but yeah. Sorry, go on, guys. I don't want to... Go ahead. And, well, I was just going to say, it's like when it first came out, it was ran in pretty much everyone's extra deck to the point that you had to avoid making a lot of Cyber Dragon plays. But like nowadays, there's a pretty good chance of running into somebody who doesn't even have it in their extra deck. And I really think that's where Konami went with the uh, Synchros and the Xyz monsters... A lot of people were focusing on those plays, running Genzo, running... They made us forget about the true classics that really can wreck a game. Oh, yeah. I'm wondering if you can maybe squeeze chain material into one of these decks, but I highly doubt it. Nobody makes mention of another good one either, but his his low attack really is what 
hurts him. But if you ran him with Jinzo, come on, guys, you know what I'm talking about. You mean Jinzo number seven? No. Oh. Jinzo returner is good. I like Jinzo returner better. But I'm thinking of the counterpart to Jinzo. Jinzo takes. Oh, I spell off. Yeah, spell canceler. Spell canceler. You run Jinzo and spell canceler. And your opponent has no back row. Well, you have the Cheerio Beast, though, and Barky on. So. And that's, that's what I'm saying. Konami kind of pushed with the Synchros, with the Xyz Monsters. They pushed it more to that. But people tend to forget the building blocks of the game. You know, if you really want to take out spells and traps, your big things back in the day were Genzo and Spell Cancelor. They just, obliterated that zone. If you ran can- together, like was spell canceler ever like ran a whole lot though? Because I don't. Because I remember it being played in my area like off and on, but I don't recall it, how much it, it actually got. I don't think it ever got globally. Big, but, uh, no. there's always someone uh, gonna try and run the combo of him and Jinzo. And I think because it's like more I remember. Well, because like your your attack and defense aren't really going to be as crucial anymore. Um, you can summon it easy, and I remember there was one guy at my locals who ran it in a few decks, and it was actually very it was very good in his it's very good in his deck um, for what it was, anyways. Most of the time anymore, people aren't really looking at mostly monsters that can be ver- viable. Well. They're looking at monsters that can be viably lethal, but they're mainly looking at exceed monsters that can stop that kind of stuff. Like you're looking at. Yeah, your um, is in your extra deck now, and your main deck is just to get to that win condition. I can say this right now: if you can find a way to just go, like, for me, I have a friend who <laughs> runs a straight vanilla normal deck. If you run something along the lines of, you know where you can drop two normal monsters and then just say Tyrant's Throw on someone, you just wrecked the other person's deck because with Tyrant Throws, you can't summon any effect monsters at all. And what does this game have anymore? Effect monsters really only. And even if you can set them. You can can set set them, them. but you can't really use them at all. Yeah, but you're vulnerable. It's uh, So you have to control... uh, Two normal monsters or two non-effect monsters or what's the? You have to control two normal monsters, sacrifice them, and then um, that effect comes into play. And they well, can't be tokens. And they can't be tokens, right? Like it has to be accept tokens. It has to be effect monsters. Or it has to be normal monsters. I know the tokens are, are normal, but yeah, but see, like tokens are normal by definition. So I should just I should just look it up. Yeah, I was gonna say just it's tyrant's throats. I know tyrant's that our uh, our uh, participants in the uh, flash tournament Tuesday really enjoyed the flash tournament because of exactly what you guys were just speaking about. This past Tuesday's was warriors, but the twist was that there was no extra deck, so people had to actually come up with toolboxes. You didn't have an extra deck to rely on, so. Oh my gosh, I can't just exceed or synchro or fusion summon into what I need. I actually have to think of a viable toolbox that's going to win this for me. I could have done it. I would have just made it an equip deck. <laughs> Benkai. There was a Benkai deck. I in, uh, ran Benkai. Go Ayane. Ryu Maru ran one of my favorites. He ran a Bushi box build. Yeah, he was your ringer, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He surely was. Mm-hmm. Dark Shadow ran uh, something along Heroes using Gemini Spark with Alias for draw power and destruction. And Scrub 2 Pro, uh, can't remember exactly what he ran. But uh, he's one of the top-rated duelists on uh, Dueling Network, and he's also IM's uh, fiancé. So, you know, his decks aren't lackluster, but 
it was actually very interesting to see the tournament play out with no extra deck. Like I said, all of this is going to come to fruition after we have our next Flash tournament this coming Tuesday, and I'll explain why I throw the twists in to give you guys a little better insight who do listen to these podcasts as to why I do it. I know why you do it. It's one of those things to where it's becoming to where most people – yeah, it's one of those things where I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a guess at it. I'm taking a big swing at it. It's one of those things where when you see a duelist come into the like arena, so to speak, they come in and all they're really playing is the same deck over and over and over and over again. And you know they'll have the same kind of staples when it comes to their side deck or their extra deck for that matter. Well, if you throw in these little twists where it's like, oh yeah, you can't run this. Oh, you can't run that. Oh yeah, there's also this. You're really throwing them a curveball because most players don't know how to play without those kinds of things. It takes the original players, the players who can see, okay, I've got all these cards at my disposal. I can just take this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and I can just go, okay, let's go. Let's build a deck out of it and then just start rolling with the punches from there. It's one of those things where you don't – you're not one of the, those kinds of players that just – just looks at the deck online and just goes, I like that, 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 that's mine, 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 mine. And now it's my build. Awesome. Eddie hit, the, Eddie hit the spoiler alert. Yes, okay, I'll go ahead and cover this. Basically, basically the whole gist of it is is to get everyone to look at different sections of the deck because people basically nowadays go online, look for a skeleton that works, and they don't think of originality, the other cards you can look at out there, or look at a specific zone and see how you can make that stand out and really make an impact in the game. So by taking out certain parts of it and making you concentrate on other areas has been, I'm trying to help everyone grow a little and start to get a little more knowledge. It's not just, oh, okay, I know I need Pot of Avarice, I know I need two Mirror Force, I know I need two Torrential, I know I need Call the Haunted Monster Reborn, I know I need this, that, and the other, and I need this in my extra deck. By taking out key components or throwing twists in, it really sets it apart from the people who are the real pros, the guys who go back, they can think up, because you have an hour to make your deck, so... And nobody knows what the theme is until I announce it after everyone signed up. So seeing your guys who come in there, they make a deck within an hour that's competitive. That shows you the guys who really think things out. And that's what I'm trying to help players do is take take the time to look at your deck as a whole. Not just yeah, not just think inside the box. Go outside the box and see what's really what could really make your deck shine. Yeah, where you don't have to run into the same thing at uh, your locals and stuff and think, oh my gosh, what can I do to go against that? Well, when you're playing in these flash tournaments, a lot of people are looking at cards they never gave a second thought to. And then all of a sudden they play it in this and then... You associate that to playing in real life, and you see what it can do for your deck in a flash tournament, and you wonder, hmm, would this be a good card to go to locals or regionals and just catch people off guard with it? Well, you know, it might be. And I think if nothing else, it's a great idea pool that everyone can really benefit from. Um, Like even just on this podcast, I got a few ideas that I'll be tossing around and going back and forth with, and... You know, um, I think I think if anyone has you know an idea that they're even half baked on, I say just run with it. And you want to hit it. Oh, go ahead. Well, and also too, it's like um, if you have an idea, I try and kind of focus on being the player who's using my cards as my tools, opposed to the uh, the reverse of that. And just saying, well, okay, well, here are my cards, and I'm going to be the one acting them out. I find that if I do it that way, I'm not going to learn a whole lot, and I'm not going to grow as a player. Uh, 
I'm going to say my favorite deck I faced in recent months was something I'd never seen anybody else play. I know that it's a viable deck, but not a whole lot of people play it. Uh, You guys have probably heard of it, Monster Mash, where you use Prisma to special summon different forms of Dark Magician. But, you know, just the people who think about that, take the time to pay tribute to the originals and think of new ways to abuse them. It's really interesting to see a player who takes the time to be original with their deck rather than going in and seeing, oh, well, okay, they copied that off nationals. Because when I'm playing those guys, I I go mainly to locals to have fun. I, I build it more competitively when I go to a regionals or like uh, YCS Indies coming. If I go to that, I'm going to be more competitive, but I go to my locals for fun. So if I run into something like that, I usually have a fun deck with me. It's just like, fine, I'm just going to sit back here, and you can go dun 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 dun, and waste the entire time in like (laughs) five minutes. Real quick before we segue into our uh, next topic, two more things. Um, gonna have to mention that Wind Up Zen Mines is becoming a staple in almost every deck at this point. Well, I still need one. I already but... made up the ten. So, and the other thing that I want to mention is that if you're a newer player coming into the game, newer players are really gonna look at those these decks that are on top right now because that's all they really know how to do. But if you're an older player and you're sitting here looking at these top decks and, you know, you're thinking to yourself, boy, I should just cut that, cut and paste that and just make it my own. You guys make me sick. This is where I hope some of our newer players are actually listening to these. And, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of oldies but goodies come out of our podcasts. You know, things that would have been played heavily back in the day that just see no play. And that's, like I said, that's why I do the uh, forbidden reviews. That's why I do the worst card of the week. It's not necessarily when I do worst card of the week that that is the absolute worst card. Oh, you figure? (laughs) No, I mean, it has to be the absolute worst card of the week, and any challenge against it is going to be... It's going to be sorted. My whole idea is to get people thinking, well, how can I use that? Like someone, uh, there was a something S numerat, testudo a numerat. <laughs> it's a, uh, but if played right, that could actually be a very broken card, but people don't even look at it. But that's my challenge in laying the worst card of the week out there is think of a way to abuse it. Like I saw your comment on 3000 needles, Mr. Nomad, Uh, (laughs) you know, I only gave it a five. His effect is useless, but if you look at the card as a whole, he's got 3000 attack. No, nothing saying he can't be special summon. He's got a good defense. Well, I even say on that card, (laughs) what do I even comment on there? Oh, I can't remember. I know there was one comment about uh, hoping he didn't have to go to the bathroom. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It was like something about like <laughs> but every have a time, hard time I with the washroom. And I see the needle cards, I'm like thinking they're just making the worst card of the week easy. I'm waiting for 4,000 needles. Okay, and one other thing that breaks my heart almost every time I did those flash tournaments, Kyo, you beat me in the just put me second place. It broke my heart almost every time. I'm like, Ugh! that's why. But he's good. I give him that. He's good. And that's that's the test of the guys who actually think it out. And that's uh, that's been one of the things I've enjoyed about hosting them. Is all the decks I'm getting aren't your general. Okay, let's spam, spam, spam into this, this, this. That's why I throw the twists in. Because if you guys come in every week and you face the same deck, how many of you are actually going to come back and play another game? Not really. I don't want to come back and play, but if I know that every week it's going to be fresh, 
It's going to be something new, and you never know what kind of twist the Fox is going to throw in. I mean, archetype discussions, it's it's pretty apparent what Tuesday is going to be. But <laughs> what, uh, what twist am I brewing up in my evil Fox mind that I'm going to throw into there? You should oh. ban limit removal. That's the you fun should, factor. You should ban limiter for that tournament. Oh, if it no. was to happen. I already know what I'm doing, and it's evil. Very evil. It's evil? It's very uh, evil. So it's... To play gadgets. No, I went... No, oh, come on. That, that would just be unoriginal. <laughs> no, so it's the, much more evil. Yeah, people so have is to it, find the best gadget build. So is it evil, like two small Asian men and a flag? Evil? <laughs> Anyway, I think we need to segue into our next to last topic for the night. Best deck. Best deck. Uh, I'm going to say, and it's not a complete, for me, it's not a complete uh, machine build. My best deck that I enjoyed, and it was a spam deck, was what I called Reflection Chrome Illusion. It was when Reflect Bounder first got unlimited, and it was basically a reflection deck. Ran three dimension walls, it ran the magic cylinder, it ran everything that burned, but every monster burned. Chimthonian soldier, so my opponent was taking the damage with me. Amazon is swordswoman, so my opponent was taking the damage instead. Three reflect bounders, so my opponent was taking that damage. Lob- what about Blasphere? And at the time, uh, Ring of Destruction was still around, so I'd give him a Lava Golem. Then I'd play Ring of Destruction, Barrel Behind the Door, Bye Bye 6,000 Life Points, and you basically set them into a corner where they can't do anything because anything they attack on your field is going to take out their life points. And then, of course, you evil. you run Dark Spirit of the Silent in the background and make them have to attack or staunch defender. Thank you. Very, very fun deck that Reflect Bounder was one of the key elements of it, which was a machine. What about you, Nomad? What's one of your best machine or machine uh, built um, around some kind of machine yeah. deck? I guess aside from, um, I guess, the usual stuff that I would have copied from from the almighty internet, um, I have two here. Uh, the first one, I guess, I really can't really call it all, all that original, but... Uh, it ran stuff like uh, Blue Thunder and Lord British um, and Cyber Eltonen, which is basically a monster that you special summon from your hand by removing uh, all the machines you control and all the machines in your graveyard. And it gets attack equal to how many you've removed. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Lord British, um, Jade Knight, and everything else that gave you all the, the extra... Uh, Pieces. Yeah, yeah. And then what happens is when you summon this big guy, it sends all other face-up monsters to the graveyard. Um, so it's kind of like Judgment Dragon, in a sense. Um, uh, other than that, which is easily my, I guess my favorite, would have to do with magical hats um, and Gear Town, and of course our ancient gear, uh, Gadgetron Dragons, which is what I kind of hinted about in the beginning of our recording. Um, its main idea would be, or I guess most uh, themed idea, would be to have magical hats. Um, You flip down a monster, you control, you summon two two copies of Gear Town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's, it's ideally Gear Town. And they're destroyed, you summon a pair of big guys, and then it's... Swing. Even the way I that well, look at magical hats. Yes, right. I, a friend of mine thought of that actually. Yeah, That's it's what, not. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. It's 
I'm just saying it's it's by no means like a secret, but the way I had it was I had mater bugs, um and a lot of like one for one destruction. Um at one point I even ran uh, malevolent catastrophe when Heavy Storm was banned. Um I love Dimensional Prison in that deck because you can chain it. Um two magical hats or even do deep prison before and then when you're still in the battle step, you play your hats and it it was a very fun deck and I was doing pretty well with it at one time, so Eddie? Yeah. Okay, well there's a there's a lot of ideas that I'm now that I'm flipping through my dag on binder looking for some cards I need for this deck that I want to build out. I mean I noticed that we passed over talking about Morphtronics, uh quick draw synchron, you know, stuff like that. But for me, my best deck that I'm trying to build right now, and Coin, you may say that I copied you <laughs> with the name, but to be honest, before I actually saw your deck on our site, I had this deck built on Dueling Network. I have to call it my Gears of War deck. And I'm using the old Ancient Gear monsters, the Ancient Gear Gadgetron, the uh, Ancient Gear Golem, what the... Ancient Gear Beast and, you know, things like that. I'm using the combo of Magical Hats and the three Gear Towns in the deck. I'm using things like Trade-In to be able to, you know, trade in and draw cards faster. You know, throwing in the uh, Cyber Dragon to kind of also give me that special summon ability. And, you know, things like that. It, it's really lethal if I can get up and running going. What about you, Jen? Um, really only... The only um, machine deck I built and maintained was when I first joined Yu-Gi-Oh! Forums, I uh, started <laughs> trading and obtained a um, <laughs> necessary to build a Cyber Dragon deck, and that was what I was working on for the longest time. And um, I didn't, at first it wasn't a true Cyber Dragon deck because I didn't have the fusions or anything, but I did have Cyber Ogres and Cyber Ogre 2. So it started as a Cyber Ogre 2 deck and evolved into Cyber <coughs> Dragons. You got all the uh, stuff you'd expect to see. Cyber Phoenix, um, Cyber Ogres, or not Cyber Ogres, Cyber Dragon, Cyber Elton, and um, Cyber Valleys, the fun stuff. All right, well, <clears throat> kind of to wrap things up, a uh, few things, just... Uh, want to make people aware of first before we wrap up on the site. Uh, next month we are going to be supporting breast cancer awareness. The image we're actually going to be putting up will go directly to the American Cancer Society. We will be having a team for the Relay for Life that will be Team Midnight TCG. A <clears throat> couple ideas that are probably going to be put into effect one of them a lot of our members have probably already seen is the $5 entry for one of our term tournaments. There's not going to be a uh, – there's not – Fox isn't going to throw any twists into that tournament. You're paying to play. The prize is going to go out that night, and it's probably going to be our Insector Centipede map for first place. Second place is going to be a Calcujotter, and uh, – Basically, third place will be love. First, you know, the big thing is is to think that you're supporting a good cause. $5 to play. It's not going to be like our Flash tournaments where it's over a span of weeks. You're going to get a prize right away for paying $5. And you're not paying the Fox. You're not paying Midnight TCG. You're paying a good cause. You're paying to help cancer patients. Save the titties. Yeah. Save the tatas. Yes. Also, our uh, our default skin for that month, both on the mobile browsers and on the regular computer browsers, is going to be switched to our Anastasia skin, which is pink and black, to show our support. And there will also be a raffle. What we're going to do is for every $10 you donate, you're going to get an entry. Everybody's been asking about that Hornet mat. You want the Hornet mat? Make a $10 donation next month when the link goes up. We're going to try to have it up before then. 
But starting in October, I'll be checking to see who's made donations. Every $10 you make, you're going to get an entry. And Jinzaki at the end of the month is going to, we're going to do a live drawing over Skype. He's going to record it for us. So the more $10 donations you make to help cancer, to help cancer patients and help the relay for life, the more chances you have of winning that Hornet mat. And, uh, so, I mean, I really want to push that midnight TCG really wants to go out there for a good cause. And also we take pause, give mention to e com. They did a donate play mats that are going to be going in some of these giveaways to come. The two Calcu Jotters and the two play mats that will be going out for breast cancer awareness were from e J. So we definitely want to give them a shout out for that. Uh, you know, we're running it, but it's their prizes we're giving away to our members for helping out a good cause. So let's try to do our part and really make an impact on breast cancer research and cancer research in general. Uh, just a few reminders before we go off. The race to 8,000 is still going on. The Exodia mat is still out there in the open, Eddie, Nomad is in the lead. I know. Uh, Shush. Uh, the scavenger hunt contest, I put in there, it was ending the 12th. We had one person who finally submitted it. Unfortunately, he got three answers wrong. So nobody <laughs> oh, won the podcast scavenger hunt. Time. Yeah. <laughs> I could barely answer most of those, to be honest. Well, but, I don't see. I Here's didn't thing, expect to get a correct to... answer out of uh, the first one. If you, if you want to least... see some of the prizes E-Roll J is giving away, go take a look at uh, the in, the important announcements area prize pool for Midnight TCG and E-RollJ.com. We basically got a set of the Insectors as play mats, and we got five Calci Jotters, so those are going to be going out. We do have six positions on staff. So if you're interested in modding on the site, take a look at our staff application thread. If you think you can dedicate that time and you know enough about that section, send your uh, application to myself and SM <coughs> on E-Roll J again. Uh, put it out there. Um, if you do decide you want your own custom-made play mat or you just want something from their stock, use the code MTCG2012 and you get $5 off your order. So if you want your own play mat, we were kind of joking about some good ones we would like to see that we unfortunately <laughs> get kicked out of tournaments for. But <laughs> uh, definitely. Uh, dark magician girl, you dirty, dirty girl. Yeah. You could uh, <laughs> upload your own images onto it. They put it on a mat for you. They ship it out to you. It's a really good service. The Vox uses it. Uh, before we even partnered with them, most of the contests you see were mats from e -Roll J. It's really high quality stuff. Kai OU won our, uh, finally won our last tournament. He won the Gravekeeper's mat. He's pictured on the front page. Uh, stickied at the top in our shout box, definitely the question for the members, would you pay $5? to the American Cancer Society to play in the tournament. Go in there, put your votes in. I'm, re I'm really hoping to see a good turnout on it. And when I roll this out, I, I would really like to see a lot of support go to it. It's a uh, cause that's near and dear to myself and probably a lot of our members, you know, not themselves, but their family members who've been affected by cancer. Everybody thinks they can't make a difference, but it's all in your thought process. You really can make a difference. And all you have to do is play Yu-Gi-Oh! All you have to do is play Yu-Gi-Oh! want to remind everybody, deck of the month this month is themed, is prized. Winner gets a Six Samurai Structure deck. Theme this month is Wind. Your extra deck can have, any, have things that are non-Wind, but everything in your main inside has to be all Wind. Um, keep entering the flash tournaments. 
you kind of got the sneak peek on what the fox is doing, but you never know what actual twist I'm going to throw out there. But there's always a twist. It's never easy. So don't come in thinking, oh, man, they went over machines. It's going to be machines, and that's it. No. I'm going to have a twist, but you won't hear it till everybody's signed up. Tuesday. <laughs> exactly. And if anybody's noticed, it's kind of went on a little schedule. I'll throw out a hint. 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take a look. Good, because I might be home from college and might participate in this one. <laughs> yeah, well, ideally I'll be around for that one. But uh, we'll see. And congratulations to uh, Kai OU. He uh, did make mod on the site. He'll be helping out in the Yu-Gi-Oh! general discussion area. We want to thank our people who have stepped down Texas Hippie 10 for uh, everything he's done for the site. And, you know, the gentlemen who have stepped down on their own, life's just gotten busy. They do know there's always a spot for them on staff. But uh, basically, keep referring your friends. Keep bringing more people in. Next month, we're really pushing the support for breast cancer and cancer in general. So definitely, even if your friends don't play Yu-Gi-Oh, if they just want to come in and they want to read about what's going on in wrestling, if they want to come in and they, they like magic, there's a section for that. If they like video games, we have gaming podcasts and we have reviews. There's something here for everyone. Bring your friends, direct them to that image and say, hey, man, you know, come in and make a donation. Let, let, let's make a dent in this and and help the American Cancer Society. And like I said, nothing will go to me. You guys will see it will redirect to uh, the American Cancer Society's page. So there's nothing I'm making off this. It's just to go to a good cause. So on behalf of Midnight TCG, let's save the tatas. Ooh, I want to play us out this time. Kyo-O, toothbrush, death ray, go. <laughs>